Hello beautiful people, my name is Teresa and welcome to my channel. Um, it is my birthday. It is my first video, so let's see how we go today. It's a learning process. Um, we're going to do a bit of a get ready with me today so you can learn a bit about what to expect over the coming months on this channel. Um, bear in mind, I am a really new to this. I am learning on the go as far as editing. It's a learning process. 53 today. Um, who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Um, so I'm going to use a full face of Australian products. I'm not going to go too much into the nitty gritty, but I will list them all um, down below. So if there's anything that you see that you quite like, feel free to go and have a look. Now we do need to get to the business end of course, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to be notified anytime a new video is uploaded. If at the end of that you like this, please give this video a thumbs up. Tell your friends, tell your sister, tell your mother. It's um, not often that someone that's 53 actually launches a channel. Well, certainly not in Australia, I don't think. Um, so come along on the ride. And if you are new to makeup, then I've got you covered. If you are not sure um, where you're going with it, what's happening with your menopausal skin, I've certainly got you covered there. And also, let's have a look at this. Look at these eyes. If you have hooded, saggy eyes, I am your girl. My eyelids touch my eyelashes. Um, other parts of my body touch parts that they shouldn't either. But we won't go there. Okay, so first up, I am starting with the Home Beauty uh, Primer in the shade Bang. So as I said, I am 53 today. I live in Tasmania, in Hobart. Um, I have been obsessed with makeup and skincare all of my life essentially um between the women in my family and i come from a very strong female based family um and i also used to work in a my first job was in a department store where we had helena rubenstein and estee lauder and elizabeth arden and i was 14 years old and absolutely fascinated with the products I would, I thought that the women that presented them, the, the makeup women were insanely sophisticated and glamorous and would volunteer to go along to any makeup night that we had. And if I ever had the chance to be the face that they put makeup on, um, I would jump at the chance and then hold a mirror and watch everything that they did. Then of course, you know, we as, as we go through different phases in our life and, um, become parents sometimes we need to do what is quick and just get out the door if we even do anything the last few years I have struggled with chronic pain and sorry I'm just adjusting a mirror here I have struggled with chronic pain and as such um, got back into the world of makeup to help cope with it was advised to give up work didn't want to um, didn't want to be on all the meds that I was on and I was on a lot of medication and I sort of escape in YouTube videos and it reignited a love for it. That has since um, turned into a freelance job writing content for Mamma Mia and now moving into this. So going in with the um, DB Cosmetics Skin Renew Ceramide Foundation, if you are a little bit dry, if you are a bit more mature, this is a beautiful, beautiful foundation um, for mature skin in particular. So speaking of which, obviously, mature skin. I am a mature woman, 53 years old. They say a lady never tells her age. Well, <laughs> I'm no lady. And that's okay. Who needs to be? Um, what I am is very forthright, very honest, and probably to my own detriment sometimes. Um, what you'll find on here is... I. I don't have a preference for luxury products. I don't have a pre preference for savvy products. I mean, we all like to save money. What I do like is the right product that works for me, irregardless. If it means that we save some money, even better. Um, but I'm not going to lie. You can see behind me, I have an absolute ridiculous amount of eyeshadow palettes. Do I like having this as my background? Not particularly, but it's definitely down to 
a space issue. I'm in a very small room here, so um, we work with what we've got. It um, hopefully one day I'll be in a different a different space. But mature skin, I am what I would I would say I'm menopausal. I think I'm past peri now. It's a bit of a bit of a mystery to me. I suffer from polycystic ovaries, endometriosis. I have done all my life. Um, and what that means is that a few years back, 10 or so years ago, 10, 12 years ago, I had an endometrial ablation. So I haven't had a period for that long. Used to get all the symptoms, have had all the fl hot flushes going through peri. Um, but I think I'm past it. What I am now is menopausal where my skin's becoming reactive to things. My skin, for context, is pretty normal, slightly combo, just a little bit of oiliness through the T-zone. Sometimes it goes dry depending on the seasons, but what it's becoming now is sensitised and reactive. So things that have worked well and never had a problem with um, are now becoming, could be an issue, and I don't know until it happens. If you have followed along on Instagram or seen the article I wrote for Mamma Mia, you would see that my face I had a reaction to something and it just kept happening and happening. Still don't know what it is. Still waiting to see a specialist in regards to that. He's apparently um, very, very in demand. It's I'm, I'm going privately, not publicly, but there's still a huge wait for it. So trying to find out if there is something in particular that I'm allergic to. In the meantime, it's just a roll of the dice. And I know a lot of women going through peri and menopause tend to have that same sort of thing. So you can come along on the journey for that. Okay, going in with concealer now, and I'm using the Runway Room uh, Pink Flesh Mineral Concealer. I am absolutely obsessed with this. Um, I have to force myself to use other concealers. I don't want to brighten up too much under my eyes. I don't need that huge white light underneath my eyes at this stage. Sometimes, most days, no. Um, this is a peachy color, slightly color corrects. I don't have too much issues under my eyes. Um, and it just gives me the coverage that I want. It doesn't move, it doesn't cake. It just evens out underneath my eyes. And because I'm only using Australian products today, I'm going to use this as my eyeshadow base. As you can see, that's just given me the coverage that I need um, without it being too much. And without it, I, I, like I said, I didn't want it to brighten too much underneath my eyes. Now, another thing that um, people say that you shouldn't do once you get to a certain age is not is use powder. So I say, whatever. The issue with powder is, and with makeup, if you want longevity, you need to use powder. It's as simple as that. If you wonder why your makeup falls off your face throughout the course of the day, if you wonder why it's creasing, if you wonder why it's getting patchy, you haven't set it with powder. It's that simple. Powder is not going to make you look cakey. Powder is not going to make you look flat and dry. I wear powder every day. I get comments on how glowy my skin is. There's ways around it, and we're going to show you that today, maybe. Um, we'll do a deep dive in that coming up. Today I'm using the Takiya Joy Velvet Press Finishing Powder. So what we'll be doing on this channel, what made me start it is, I think there's a bit of a space for women my age in Australia. There are plenty of content creators overseas, um, but is there someone that is me on here? As in, do I see myself reflected back in people? And I think my age group, and I don't know why, we are of the generation that we were there for the early adaptation of Botox and fillers. So there's a, still quite a lot of stigmatism around it for a lot of women. And I get women reach out to me all the time asking if I've had anything. Um, again, if you've watched any of the lives, you'll know, because I quite often point out wrinkles. Um, we, were, we were of the generation where anyone over about 45, 46 was a bit more nervous about putting botulism into their face. Younger women just go, it's like having a facial and absolutely it is it's been around long enough that we know that but there's still been that hesitancy um, and again 
I am absolutely not against, not against it at all. I 100% will have it at some stage, but you will see. Okay, so I have just um, done my base products. What I tend to then do is just add a bit of hydration back into that. You can see we're not particularly flat, but we are well and truly set. I set twice. Home Beauty Primer uh, Setting Spray. What else are we going to use? Let's be honest. Oh, and if you have used it, you know when I inhale the scent that I can smell. It is beautiful. So with this channel, we'll be doing things like makeup obviously i'll do some get ready's with me i'll do makeup reviews full face ofs um i think the first one i'm going to do i don't think you can see it up there i'm going to do a full face of revlon i have a lot of thoughts around a lot of products from revlon we'll have um reviews on some new products it's not going to be all new products maybe new to me we may do faces of dupes and comparisons um We'll also be focusing on skincare. The first one I'm going to do is talk about some of my favourite products um, over the last 12 months while I haven't been on the channel with a lot of it. What it does mean is that you, I get a lot of questions about what skincare products I use and you'll be able to see what I've been using the last 12 months. I've since moved on from a lot of them just because of the nature of getting products sent to try but there are some that are still heavily in rotation. And I'll talk through some of them. Um, we'll do deep dives into particular products. We'll do dives onto, so particular products, whether that is retinol and retinol alternatives. Um, we will break down ingredients and what to look for and what they mean. We'll discuss foundations and primers and, and what desilicons and oils and water-based products mean and the interaction of them. So we're going to cover a fair bit. Um, it is all a learning process and sometimes you don't necessarily um, know that and I'm here to make that job a little bit easier. Going into bronzer now, the Melissa Gigliotti bronzer in, I think it is Beach Bum from memory. I can't actually read it, um, which is something you learn. I am blind. Not literally, but everything is a blur. Um, I'm just waiting to see if I can get some uh, uh, contact lenses um, to be able to aid in this. I suffer from extreme dry eye, so it makes wearing contacts very, very hard um, to stay in. So even if I'm just using it for filming, I think that um, we might need to move there because... I'm pretty blurry what I'm looking at now so I can't tell if I'm in focus or not isn't that fun so as I said 53 years old um, I have just celebrated two years of marriage uh, with my husband <laughs> not with anyone else um, and we're a, a bit of a blended family, so I have two daughters in their, their mid to late 20s. He has two sons under 20. Um, bit of a Brady Bunch, missing an extra person. Okay, going in with the Runway Room uh, Peach Punch Mineral Cream Stick. This is nice. Onto a brush, and then I like to just... So... I get a lot of comments in regards to my eyeshadow blending and so I thought what I would do is um, teach everyone how I do it. It's the difference that you find when you are doing your um, when you were doing your eyeshadow as to how it compares to a makeup artist is just the time spent blending um, and that's what makes all the difference and it's not excessively longer it's just learning how to do it so we're go I'm going to do a series um, an eyeshadow one-on-one -on -one essentially um, this is good for any skill set whether you are a beginner uh, wanting to learn whether you are just wanting to learn how to up how your eyeshadow looks so you've got to learn to walk before you can run so we'll start off with a one and done one eyeshadow color using it to create all the different tones to blow it out and um, if you can do that, that's the biggest step into how to blend your eyeshadow. So we'll go through 
one shadow we'll build it up from there we'll do some neutral looks some matte looks we will two colors three colors um, we'll even do glam makeup we'll look at doing some colorful makeup but it's going to be a series of building process um, we'll do other lessons contour versus bronzer how to make your makeup last all, all day how to create a glowy look when using powder products for example now just quickly this stick I really love but it wasn't something I was reaching for continuously until I saw Runway Rooms founder Alex Favola when this was released which is the Press Powder Pink Frost she did this what I'm about to do and she layered this over the top of this cream stick and it is something this has got a slight flush to it I have used this so much since then um, I absolutely love this for a beautiful pink look can you see it's got a slight glow to it here um, it just enhances the combination of those two is just beautiful 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 well done Alex it's amazing um, highlighter now going in with again Melissa Gigliotti the highlighter in the shade golden hour this color I thought would be too dark for me when I got it it is not it just does something We will talk about down the track my placement of my highlighter because I don't go up here which is sort of the standard and I don't go up there because we are women of a certain age and we have lines we do not need to highlight those lines what we do want to do is create fullness and glow and lit from within that'll be a lesson coming up soon so the hope is that I'll get to do three videos a week um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is in an ideal world, but as I said, it is a learning process. Do I know how to edit videos yet? No, I've been watching non-stop. I filmed this a couple of times already earlier on in the week. I came across as quite manic. Do you need me to be manic? No, you don't. Am I trying not to be? I really am. I don't know if it's working. Uh, brows. By Summer is a Melbourne, I think she's a beauty therapist. It's a small lady startup. She literally only has two products. One is Stuck by Summer and the other is Colour by Summer. This is the best eyebrow setting product I have ever, ever used. Ever. If you have a good set of eyebrows like mine, if you have eyebrows that you really need to hold, if things melt out of it, if you get sweaty, if you have eyebrows that fall down like a sad little person, this is the product you need. It locks them in. It sets. Not rock hard. It sets. It sets. It is waterproof. It really takes a lot to break it down at the end of the day. I don't want my makeup, my eyebrows to sag. I reckon I could go swimming in this. No problem. That's how good it is. Okay, that lays them down flat. Now, I will let that essentially set and dry. Um, I tinted my eyebrows last week, so I don't need too much. I'll just go in after and slightly fill in a couple of little spaces with them. Okay, for eyes, using Glaminatrix Rich Romantic Palette. I'm using this because it is, I think, the only palette that is currently available at the moment. Um, small Gladstone-based lady startup. Amazing, amazing quality um, this is as good as Pat McGrath this is as good as anything that is on the market can't wait I've said it before can't wait to see where they go over the next few years because I think they have an astronomical future ahead of them um, I have quite a few of their palettes love them moving forward if um, you're getting through this I would really love if you have anything that you would like to see me do something on absolutely put it down in the comment box um, I'd love to hear from you because this will help me design what you want 
and what you want is absolutely what I want. So I'm not going to explain all the shades at the moment. One, because I cannot read them. Um, and two, it's not about, this isn't a tutorial today. So as I said, it is my birthday today. Um, hopefully, I've had no trouble <laughs> editing this. It's uploaded and right now, it should be 27 degrees in Hobart and I should be down at the beach with uh, my little dog in the kayak. Um, I have the day off work. So um, hopefully that has all worked out. And by hopefully, she doesn't know how to kayak it. She's never been in a kayak. So I'm going to get her a life jacket and probably spend three hours trying to convince her that it is okay, that she's not going to drown and probably just running around on the beach and constantly falling off. I've got a stand-up paddleboard that converts into a kayak and that's what I'm going to use first, I think, because it is broader. Um, it's probably a bit more stable for what I want to do for her first time um, and get her used to that. And then once she's used to that, move her into um, our normal kayaks, I think. Okay, going in now, slightly darker. So what I will do moving forward is when we talk about when, we, when I'm doing eyeshadows for you and breaking down, I'm going to talk about your hood, I'm going to talk about the anatomy of your eye shape, your eye socket, and how we find our crease, because our crease is not our crease necessarily. I'm also hoping to dig out some old palettes. It's not always going to be palettes that are currently available. How many of us have got products that we've been holding on to for so long and they're still old favourites, or we've forgotten about them till we see someone use them. So I've got a lot of them. And we'll discuss things like, well, you can't see on this one, we'll discuss things like um, expiration dates on product and products and what that means. We'll also discuss things that are pigmented. What is safe on your eyes? Why do certain palettes have warnings that say not suitable for eyes? I know, and I'm sure a lot of you know, but there will be some that wonder. So we will go into that. But just so that you know, I use pigment palettes around my eyes. Okay, sort of happy where they are at this point in time. I've just used one brush for all of that, just so you know. I do have a microfiber cloth that I'm sort of cleaning it off in between, but it has been doable all with one brush. Okay, I love shimmer. We don't have to be afraid to use shimmer at our age. We just don't. We just have to place it in the right spot. We don't want it on our meaty parts. I'm about to turn this into tutorial. It's not that. We are not here for that today. We are just here to play in makeup, so I'll pull back from that. Um, so as I said, I am in Hobart. I keep going back to this. I'm a bit all over the place today. Um, I am in Hobart. This has, if someone had told me two years ago that I would be forging my, uh, my own path in the beauty community after the age of 50, I never would have believe them. I think the narrative, while it is still focused for a younger crowd, um, I think it's starting to change. Drastically? Absolutely not. Is it still aimed at the 20-something market? 100% it is. But how stupid are they? Do they not know we are the ones with the money? Our kids are out the door. We generally are a better financial place in life. We have more money to spend on all of our features that are sagging. So if companies are not marking two women over 45 years old, let me tell you, you are crazy. You are crazy because my daughters who are in their 20s barely 
put anything on their face. A bit of moisturizer, a bit of sunscreen, and they are out the door. We are the ones that will put the layers on. We are the ones that will have multiple products um, on the go. We are the ones that are fighting gravity. We're trying to pull things back up to here. Do I want to look in my 20s again? No. Do I want to look in my 30s again? No. Do I want to look in my 40s again? Hmm. Yeah. What I want is to look good for my age. I want to look hydrated. I want to look healthy. I don't think it's too much to ask. You will notice today that I have put on all of my base products before my eyes. Um, that's because I'm pretty confident in my ability to control fallout in my eyeshadows. I tend to know the products that I'm using. That being said, I did have a bit of fallout before, but you can see I pretty much got rid of it all. Um, for my tutorials, I will absolutely be doing eyes first, and I would suggest that you do too, and then you can go into base. Um, but on the daily, this is how I do my makeup. Okay, going in with an eyeliner now. This is the DB uh, Cosmetics uh, Bright Eyes Eyeliner Duo in Nude Awakening. Um, I'm just opening up my eyes today, so I'm going in with the nude side. Now, as I said before, uh, stuck by uh, this is the colour by Summer. Um, these are really set now, which we like. It's a super fine. I don't know if this will focus on it. It's a super fine tip, which gives you great control and the ability to draw fine hairs. So I think, look, I've been putting on makeup for uh, pretty much 40 years now. Um, God, oh, that hurts. Um, nearly 40 years. I um, think that I've got a bit to be able to share with you. Um, hopefully you think that as well okay next step is that i now only have um mascara and lips to do both wet products so i set my face before i go in with it with with those products i don't want my mascara to spit anywhere i don't want to wait until it's dry um lips I just prefer to do them after this as well. Um, as you can see, going in again with the Home um, Golden Hour Glow, this one is nearly empty. It's okay. I've got another one. Oh, I've got another two in the drawer back there. It's my fave. Yes, I go in with that much. I do not touch up throughout the course of the day other than my lips i will put some gloss lipstick on again i don't so much as touch up around my nose which is where most people's makeup most people's makeup will break up it'll break up around this area um the only time i ever will repowder my t-zone the only time i ever repowder my t-zone is if um I'm going to an event straight after work. Other than that, um, and even then I generally don't, it's just a slap of the lipstick. I fan that down to dry. Um, I don't push in with my beauty blender. This is all I need to do. Okay, lips I'm going in with the DB Cosmetics Pigment Pout. This is I think Rich Rose. This came as part of a set. Um, this particular one is not available, but as in the set that it came from, they're in a different colour barrel now. Um, I do believe it is Rich Rose, which is still available. Just clean off my lips.
and then going in i just got this actually going in with runway room lipstick in the shade duchess um i've swatched it i haven't even used it on my lips yet but i really like the color oh yeah that's a really nice really nice movie color and over the top with their um what shade is this the runway room lip gloss ah it's just pretty in pink of course it is this has got apricot oil in it apricot oils in it ah oh. It, it's unlocking some form of memory for me. Like a childhood memory, this apricot oil. I don't know what it is. It's comforting. Mm. Now I'm going to clean off. I've coloured that wand. So I'm just going to wipe that off before putting it back in the gloss so that it doesn't stain in there okay i haven't curled my eyelashes and i'm not going to today um i don't want to scare you that much yet but going in with the home beauty loving lash duo um primer mascara um it's a fiber tubing mascara i think i'm pretty sure but going in with the primer if you have hooded eyes that are severely hooded like mine are you find be, you have to be really careful because your eyelids sit on your eyelashes um, it makes it very difficult and what it also does is make you look like your eyelashes are tiny um, so I'm not normally a fan of well tubing is good in that it doesn't tend to get all up here um it doesn't give me the fatness on top of the length like it's a pretty standard gives you a little bit of length gives you a little bit of volume um but it's a bit more natural looking and i tend to rely on a mascara to push back some of this fatness that's around the top my outer eyelid um but I do like this one. I do like this. There's been a few. I've been slowly moving over to um, different mascaras that I haven't been using in the past. You'll see, I don't know if you can see there, I've dropped um, a little a speck of primer on my lower. I'm not too worried about that at the moment. I'm just letting that set there. Same if it happens with mascara. If you ever smack yourself in the eye which i do at least once a week um or end up with it poked in the corner there or here don't touch it don't panic just keep doing what you're doing and let it dry and it will flick off after now it is up to you if you mascara on your bottom lashes or not um i'm neither here nor there with it now i'm just going to get this spoolie and that's flicked straight off so there you have it um it was just using um a few makeup products this is sort of a bit of a learning day for me today in that just still trying to get comfortable in front of the camera it's um it's very different to using my phone let me tell you um this is a new realm for me um but hopefully i'll see you back in a, in a couple of days where we'll have a bit of a chat about my favorite skincare and then later on in the week where we'll do the first of our series of eyeshadow blending so that one eyeshadow 101 um, if you are interested in it you just need a mid to dark brown eyeshadow i'll be using the huda beauty pretty grunge palette just so you know if you liked what I did today, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Ring the notification bell to be alerted to any new uploads. Um, and if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget, tell your mum, tell your sister, tell your friends. Share it all out there. Bring them along into this community. Um, again, my name is Teresa. I've been your cruise director today. Until next time, bye.